Well, hi there, Valerie from Wyoming, our newest um, Mary Stampers team member. I'm so glad you signed up with, um, um, I just forgot her name all, Kathy. I was like, who is it? Kathy. Um, yeah, Kathy's a great lady. Uh, I feel like I know her even though we've never met in person. So um, Valerie from um, that said hello is um, one of my newest Mary Stampers team members. And she took advantage of the um, purchasing the in color um, starter kit this month from Stampin' Up. So it's a great deal. She got $191 of product and she paid just $99 plus tax and it all shipped to her free. And included in that product amount, um, she got some fabulous new in color products, including the ink pads. Um, what else was in there? Grid paper. Oh, I'll have to take a look. But it's a great, great value. I would love to have any and all of you join my Mary Stampers team. We're a great group of people who love to share um, and we share creative ideas. We share um, techniques and tips for stamping. Um, if you're interested in building a business, I have I can work with you on that and have some great resources available for you as well. Plus, I know many of you enjoy my classes to go. Um, as a Mary Stampers team member, you will get free access to the PDF tutorials for all of my classes to go. So um, many people have been enjoying that for their own purposes, as well as if they um, want to case them for a class or workshop or make and takes for a party, something like that. Anyways, hello, happy Friday from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. It sure is a rainy day here, um, but it's a good day to stay in and do some stamping. And I've been trying to do some cleaning and reorganizing. Um, so it looks kind of empty behind me today. But anyways, um, I just first of all want to give you a quick heads up. The last... Um, Facebook Live I did was Wednesday evening, and what I did was went through my current mini catalog, because starting June 1st through June 30th, um, the last chance products are available while supplies last only, and many of them are discounted. We have some products discounted up to 50%. So if you miss this Facebook Live, you can um, look for it on my blog, stampinpeace.com, or you can view it under um, the videos here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe Facebook page. If you're on the Facebook page, you just have to click the word more um, under the page banner and then click videos and you'll be able to find it. But it's very helpful because I, I went through page by page noting what was retiring and um, what, like here's some sale prices, what the sale prices are if the items are discounted. The Monday before that, we did a fun Facebook Live making three different cards featuring the bouquet of thanks. I never know where to hold this because I it's opposite. I flip it so you can see it correctly, but it's opposite for me, like looking in a mirror. Um, but we made three different cards with the bouquet of stamp, stamp the bouquet of thanks stamp set. We used watercolor pencils. Um, here's the last one, and because the stamp actually has thank you as part of the stamp. I showed how you can stamp the entire thing, the whole bouquet with the banner, but so that the banner is blank. And then you can put your um, own small sentiment in there. So it doesn't have to be a thank you card. So, um, and this is not up on my blog yet. Hopefully um, by tomorrow morning it will be. I also want to give a shout out to some people who sent me cards. This card is from 
Sherry Parker. She is my upline's upline. So she's two steps above um, where I am in the chain. And she's a great lady and I really appreciate her. She um, occasionally sends me a card or a surprise and it's just always fun to hear from her. And then I also got another, and I have to think which Lori is this. I think this is Lori Hall and I, I'm not sure if Lori's watching today, but she sent me this card. Obviously the Sweet Songbirds um, bundle is quite popular. And I just yesterday sent out, um, I believe it was 29 uh, class kits for the Sweet Songbirds class to go I had designed. So I'm excited about that. Lots of people are going to be getting some fun mail soon. And then this is uh, one that my niece Allison sent me for a graduation gift I gave her. Um, she recently got her BSN in... Uh, or for nursing um, from Ohio State University. And I have to laugh because one day she was over here. Do you remember when the pandemic started? Stampin' Up! did like a, a day long, um, I don't really remember what we called it, like a come stamp with me kind of thing. And uh, my sister and my nieces, my daughter was here and I just put out all kinds of paper and stamps and they could do what they want. Um, and this was one Allison made back then. And then the last one I'm going to show you is this darling um, baby shower invitation. And this was made by my friend um, Donna, who's also on my Mary Stampers team. And um, she did some cricket things with it. But what you want to see here is she used a number of different embossing folders to create all that texture. And um, a number of those folders are Stampin' Up! folders or retired Stampin' Up! folders. So a lot of fun. I love getting happy mail just like you do. Um, today I'm going to be showing you um, a couple of cards. And then if we have time, we'll do an um, impromptu scrapbook layout using the Hey Sports Fan Suite. Um, this suite is in our mini catalog and right now all of the products in this Hay Sports Fan Suite, or I shouldn't say right now, starting June 1st when the last chance promotion begins. Um, I'm looking for the page here. Well, I'll find it. But each of the products in that suite will be on sale starting June 1st. Okay. So I'm gonna flip my camera around now so we can get started with today's cards. Definitely hang around because I'm giving away um, cards at the end. And I hope to give you some, um, spark your creative inspiration today. And one of the cards, the first one we're going to make is a fun fold, a different one than I've ever done before. Okay, so while I'm flipping my camera, please and share this live video and invite others to join us. So you can find the Hay Sports Fan um, products on pages 68 and 69 of the mini catalog. And as you can see, they're all on sale. Um, the bundle, it's a great stamp set with dies. The dies are currently, fifth, well, keep saying currently, June 1st. I don't want to skip these last few days of May. June 1st, okay? Starting June 1st, the dies will be on sale and they will be 50% off. So if you love this bundle and haven't gotten it yet, I'm going to suggest that you purchase the two items separately on June 1st because that's a much better deal than paying the bundle price, okay? Also, the DSP, which we'll be using today, is 50% off. I don't know that I've ever seen... Um, DSP discounted that much on a last chance sale. The Darling um, Resin Stars, 30% off, and the um, Baker's Twine Combo is also 30% off. So, so here's our stamp set, dies. One thing I want to point out to you is um, many of the dies coordinate directly with the stamped images. 
or even fit in some uh, some of the stamped images even fit in some of the dies and like that um, the happy birthday i believe fits in there in addition to that some of these dies do cut out some of the designer series paper so for example on here we've got a few dies that will cut out these tickets and um, large ticket stub type images this back is a pretty um, Knight of Navy wood grain. Here's some baseball equipment or softball equipment, some red and um, vanilla stripes. Vanilla here is the, um, the neutral. A lot of times it's white on our designer series paper. On this pack, it's vanilla. Um, this die will cut out the pennants Here's that baseball thread print. Lots of dots on Evening Evergreen. And you can see some of these can be used outside of a sports theme. This is so cool. I'm thinking, wouldn't this make a great um, summertime collage, the background, or a photo, you know, perhaps a summer photo of um, children or a beach photo, something like that. I just thought this was pretty cool to include in this pack. Baseballs and bats, stars. We've got the baseball diamond and then a pinstripe, which sometimes we see on baseball uniforms, right? Okay, so the first card we're going to make is a fun fold card. And I'm not going to show it to you um, ahead of time. We're just going to um, make it as we go along. And what did I just do with those dies? Here they are, because I will need those. So starting with a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, put it in a vertical position, up and down position. And I'm gonna pull this up just slightly. And you're gonna cut at five and a half inches. Then for the purposes of this card, we need the opposite dimension to be 10 and three quarters inch. So this is 11 inches long. So I'm just going to cut off a quarter of an inch. So now, my cardstock is 10 and, oops, hold on to that. I almost threw it away. We're gonna use that actually. So five and a half by 10 and three quarters. And then I'm going to do some scoring. The first score line I'm going to make is, oh, I don't have it marked on my cheat sheet. So let me double check on my sample. I think I know what it is. Okay, so the first score line is going to be at three and a half. I'm gonna make a second score line, and for this, you're going to want to open up the arm on your um, paper trimmer, and you also want to flip your cardstock over. Does anybody remember why I do that when I flip the cardstock over. Anybody? I do that because um, I'm going to be scoring or folding on those score lines in opposite directions. So let me show you what I mean here. So my first score line I made at three and a half. The next one is at six and three quarters. And now I'm going to Z fold these. So in other words, each of those folds is going a different direction. That's why I um, scored them differently, okay? Because I want them to fold with just a little bit nicer crease. And remember, when you um, score down, this is your front, okay? This is your top. So then you fold 
together, kind of like squeeze the pieces. All right, so then I did the same thing on the opposite side, okay? So now this is the base of our fun fold card. And as you can see, it does measure five and a half by four and a quarter inches. So it's still the same standard size we're used to and will fit into our standard size medium envelopes. Oops. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some designer series paper on the front panel. Each of these panels will be the same height, but they all are a different width. Similar or close, I should say, but different widths. So for the first panel, the one on the left, the measurement is three inches by five and a quarter. It's three inches by five and a quarter. For my second panel or the middle panel, the measurement is three inches. You know what, did I say that correctly? Okay, the first one is three and a quarter. I looked at the wrong thing. Three and a quarter by five and a quarter for the first panel. The middle panel is a wee bit smaller. This is three inches by five and a quarter. And then I'm using a piece of very vanilla. Again, I have very vanilla because that's what the neutral is in the Hay Sports Fan Designer Series paper. And this measures three and three quarters by five and a quarter inches, okay? So three and a quarter inches wide, three inches wide, and three and three quarter inches wide. Now remember we have this quarter inch piece of evening evergreen that we cut off when we were um, cutting our card base to size. I wanna use this now but I'm going to cut off a quarter of an inch. Okay. So it was a quarter by five and a half. That's what we cut off that base. But now I wanna use that as an extra element on my card. And I'm just going to adhere it to that right-hand panel close to the edge close to the right edge of the very vanilla cardstock. Doing something like this, I like to use that multi-purpose glue because if I need to move it around or slide it a little bit into place or to straighten it, it's easy to do that with the multi-purpose glue. All right, so there's our card base. So now let's do some decorating. I'm going to use this piece of very vanilla. It's actually a scrap I had, but it's going to work fine. Probably a little big, but that's okay. And I've pulled in the stamp from the Your Biggest Fan stamp set. I'm using Hope Your Day is a Grand Slam. So there are lots of reasons why you could use this sentiment. Um, it could be that somebody's participating in a baseball or softball tournament. It could be that somebody is has a birthday. Um, maybe is starting a new job. Okay, so we're kind of thinking outside the box a little bit with this sentiment. Can anybody think of any other occasions they would use this sentiment for? And I'm just fussy cutting all the way around this. And to do something like this, I like to leave just a little bit of that very vanilla edge all the way around. Now you can get real detailed if you want going in and around, or you can kind of keep it simple and go straight and make um, just some longer 
cuts with less detail. But you do whatever you're comfortable with. Don't worry about it making, making it perfect. Whichever way you decide to do it, I'm sure it will be nice. And this is the only thing we're going to fussy cut. So if you're somebody who says, oh, Mary, I end up, you know, at the end, oh, I love that card, but I don't like fussy cutting. I'm going to say, well, give it a try because it's just one thing you're fussy cutting. The other option would be to cut the width of your strip to accommodate the width of the stamped image or the stamped sentiment and maybe just banner cut the end or cut each end at a slant, an angle and apply the sentiment that way. <gasps> a baby boy shower, sports competition, a graduation. Yes, those are all great ideas. I didn't think of graduation, but definitely. Um, starting a new job. I'm not sure if I said that. I love the idea of a baby boy um, shower as well. Okay, so I've got this and I'm not going to put this on my card just yet. I'm gonna, probably going to be using it on the front. I am going to stamp this happy birthday. And I'm going to put this right in the center of that very vanilla panel. Oops, I put Happy Father's Day. I meant to grab the Happy Birthday, but that's all right. It can be a Father's Day card, right? Um, and before I continue, I'm going to do some die cutting because I think there's some great pieces that can be used to um, decorate the front of this card along with this Grand Slam uh, sentiment. So let me pull this in and I'm going to use my mini stamp and cut in a boss machine because the dies I'm using will fit in this nicely. Our mini machine probably accommodates, oh, I would say 90%-ish, give or take, of our um, dies, which is phenomenal. As you can see by my cutting plates, I use mine quite a bit, um, unless I need that large one for the, my very largest dies. And the reason is, it's just so lightweight, it takes up less space on my craft table. It's easy to quickly move on and off the table because it is so light. So I have found that since I got this one, I actually use it much more. I also like it to take with me if I'm crafting at somebody else's house or maybe if I would do a class outside of my own home. This is easier to transport, take it to crops, that sort of thing. So I've got that, not sure where I want it. I'm gonna put it there. And I wanna pull something else. This is, uh, let's see, that's a home run. You're out of this league, let's celebrate together. Hey there, game seven, best day ever. I think I'm, um, I think I'm gonna use this one. 
you're out of this league. Let me see. And there are, where's my large piece? Because there's other ones here. Notice too that on these, many of the designs are repeated, but they're repeated in different colors. So that might be something you want to think of. Uh, best day ever. I'm thinking maybe it's something with the yellow would be good. I think I'll do this one. You're, you're out of this league. Or I could do hey there. Do a hey there in yellow and put that at the bottom. Hey there, hope your day is a grand slam. Let's try that. But as you can see, you can mix and match till your heart's content um, and really come up with some fun cards. So with this one pack of designer series paper and this one bundle, you could actually make several of these fun fold cards and have each of the cards be just a wee bit different because you're using um, die cutting different pieces. Keep in mind too that you could stamp and then die cut the ticket image. So endless possibilities here. Oh, Colleen, thanks for popping in. And yes, please do watch um, the remainder when you have a chance so you can see this completed card and the other one I'm going to make. So now I've got this ticket that says, hey there. And I think I'm ready to um, put these on my card. I'm gonna start by putting that large sentiment on first. Seeing some thumbs up there. That's not what I wanted. Sometimes when you're adhering, um, this is even, I don't know if how well you can see this, but this is even perforated as if you could tear off the ticket stub. Isn't that cute? That would be fun to do um, for like a child's birthday party. And you could enclose the ticket and tell them to bring it with you to the birthday party and they walk in the door and they get, you pull off the bottom portion of the ticket and they enter and maybe get a pretzel or a box of popcorn or something like that. That, could, that would be fun. So if you have any little boys or even big boys <laughs> that are into sports and a baseball theme, that would be really fun. Does anybody have little ones that are into sports? Boys, girls? My girls did play softball for a time when they were like in elementary school. I think I'm gonna pull that down. And I kind of like things hanging over this edge a little bit. Kind of brings it all together connects it all. And I've got some empty space here, right? So with that empty space, let's do some embellishing. The the two embellishments that come with this suite are the resin stars embellishments. They do have adhesive backings and come in the four colors. And then there's this great um, combo of baker's twine. 
I think I want to add some stars. Oops. I had it doubled up there, didn't I? So let's see, I think I'll do, I'm not, maybe mix and match. There's four colors, but there are um, two sizes for each color of star as well. And, oops, come on. And I'll do a small yellow one now. Remember when we're embellishing, it's often um, recommended that you use odd numbers of embellishments. Okay, odd numbers of embellishments. Um, it's just been proven. It's a matter of design, a rule of design, I guess you'll say, that um, odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. Groups of things in odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So there's our finished card. You could always switch out the inside sentiment or leave it blank just to write your note but I love it. So it's a little um, a different take on our Z-Fold card. This is called the Off-Center Z-Fold card. Off-Center Z-Fold card. But I think it is very interesting and a lot of fun. Now, I just read Doris's comment, think this bundle looks patriotic. I'm so glad you said that because the next card I'm going to show you is a very simple patriotic card. Whoops, this is the card. So the, the very same product suite, the very same designer series paper, same set of dies, and this is the card I've made. And actually, before I make this, um, I just wanna share a quick story. Um, when my mom passed away, which is gosh, almost, um, I guess it'll be six years in September, um, we were at the visiting hours um, and she comes from a very large family. So I had lots of cousins there and um, relatives, lots of friends from her church. But um, I learned something about my mom that day that I never knew. And mom was always very patriotic and all of her brothers served in one war or another. Um, but mom was just always very, very patriotic. But I learned from... Um, a godson of hers, um, a couple of cousins who had served in the military, um, spouses of cousins who had served in the military, that on Memorial Day each year, my mom would send each of them a card, or maybe it was 4th of July, I can't remember which patriotic holiday, but she would send each of them a card, just thanking them for their service, um, and it was so interesting because that came up a number of times at her wake. And it was something I never knew that she did, um, which I thought was even more cool because she was doing it um, with great respect and with great honor. And it was just a private moment between her and all those people. And I just really thought that was cool. So now anytime I see patri something patriotic or Patriotic holidays come up, I think of mom and her doing that. And that's so something my mom would do. She always sent a lot of cards anyways, but when I heard that, I just, wow, wow. Okay, so I have a standard size card base. This measures five and a half by eight and a half inches and it's scored at four and a quarter, so right in half. And again, I'm using very vanilla as my neutral. This piece for the inside measures five and a quarter by four inches. 
I've cut a piece of that red and vanilla. It's actually Poppy Parade um, is the red in here. But I've actually cut a piece of that designer series paper with the stripes. Also five and a quarter by four inches. It's a fun um, baseball print on the back. Isn't that neat? The paper also has that, um, what do I want to say? Like kind of like a vintage look, which I think is pretty neat as well. Now this I've cut also from that same pack of designer series paper, Hey Sports Fan, and it measures two and a quarter inches by two and five eighths. Two and a quarter inches by two and five eighths. Now, if you have our larger star dies or maybe a star punch, you might just want to put one star in the middle or just maybe a, a few, maybe five here and there. You can do whatever you want. What I did was use this die, cuts out all these tiny stars, and I cut it, um, die cut it twice for my first card. And then I went ahead and die cut a second time to make this card with you. And I'm gonna give you some pointers when you're trying to adhere things that are so small. I'm gonna suggest you use the multi-purpose glue and your take your pick tool, the putty end. And what I'm going to do with this, let me, it's kind of gunky at the top here. Let me get that cleaned off. I'm just going to kind of, here, there's a piece of scrap paper. I'm just kind of going to get a little bead of glue at the top of that glue dispenser, top of the glue bottle. And then I do that and put it on my paper. You don't even have to pick this up. You can actually just touch that star. Whoops, that stuck to that. And doing this, there's actually three different sizes of stars in this die. There's this large size. This also works better if they're facing up. And I think for my first card, I, um, it's got a thread or something on there. And don't worry if the glue seeps out a little bit because we can take care of that afterwards when they're all All the stars are stuck on there and dry. Again, you can put as many or as few as you want. I think for my first card, I used all of them once I had die cut twice. a little bit tedious, but it actually goes pretty quickly. So you could um, send this out for any of the patriotic holidays. You could send this to somebody who's currently in the service. or service members' family too. It's important that we not forget the families of our service men and women and the families of our veterans. Whoops, just wanna scoot that a little. Um, what else was I gonna say? If you're having like a 4th of July barbecue or something like that, you wanna send out invitations, this would be nice for that. You could send some to, um, the veterans 
home in your area or your state. Any other ideas on that one? Another way I thought to do this too, but um, oh, it's getting a little messy now. Let me wipe some of that glue off. Seems to be coming from nowhere. I didn't think I was squeezing the bottle. And finish up with a couple of these tangy ones. So you get the idea here. I think I'll do one more tiny one. I have to tell you, last night I was watching Little House on the Prairie. You know, sometimes you turn on the TV and there's just, hmm, nothing fabulous. <laughs> to watch or, you know, stuff that maybe is a little too heavy, especially lately and the kind of um, violence that's been going on in our country and stuff. But so sometimes you just need something old school, right? Well, I was watching Little House on the Prairie and it was an interesting episode because they were going to have a vote for mayor of Walnut Grove. And so they were talking about the democratic process and um, that sort of thing. And the kids of the town were really getting into it and even going um, to pick up people to bring them into town so that they could vote. So just was a cool, fun episode. And it just was ironic that that came up when it's, we've got a patriot, we're celebrating a patriotic holiday in the United States on Monday. Okay, so, um, Oh, Doris, that is a good idea. Yes. The other thing I was going to mention is you could take a piece of this blue and just randomly die cut and then put a yellow or vanilla or something behind it so that the cardstock shows through. Yes. The other thing I was going to mention to you, and I'll just do it this way. You could take, where are they? You could use a blending brush and an ink pad, or you could use a sponge dauber. And you could do this on um, other projects, maybe stars for birthdays or congratulations celebration. Maybe um, you have know somebody who's in a show or live performance or concert. And you could say, make them a card like that. You're the star of the show. But, you know, there's so many, uh, you know, we just got to let our imagination and our cr creativity just run. And we can come up with all kinds of ways. Um, you know, so many times we die cut and we have a plan for using those positive shapes, but we forget about maybe putting those negative spaces together. Doris, great minds think alike, right? Okay. Would you like to, um, would you like for me to quickly design a scrapbook page layout? We're about Let's see, about 45 minutes in. I have time if you want to stick around. Because as I was designing these cards, and I will be giving away these cards. Actually, let's do that now before I um, go on and do a quick scrapbook page layout for you. So if you are interested in um, going into the drawing to win one of these cards, please type in the comments, hey, sports fan, hey, sports fan, 
okay? That's the name of the product suite. Remember that is in the mini catalog and starting June 1st, all of those products, number one, are on sale or number two, um, will be available only while supplies last, okay? So June 1st is an important date to remember. All right, so let's do some very quick scrapbooking. Move some of the stuff out of the way. And I'll just, oh, okay, this would be great for, yes, for a patriotic thing, you know, maybe recording, um, maybe for pictures of uh, a Memorial Day parade or um, the 4th of July cookout. Let me see here. Kind of going to mix and match a little bit. What's on those other two? Ooh, I like this also. Okay, so let me grab some 12 by 12 paper. I don't have any navy, but I do have that. And and I've got some Poppy Parade. And what is the yellow? I think it was Bumblebee or Crush Curry. But I'm going to start with these, I think. see what's on the other side. So my friend Rosie and I have this idea. Yes, um, Lori, all, anything that is on the last chance list is while supplies last only. Um, even, even stamp sets. So if you really, really want it, I suggest you um, go after it right away on June 1st. So make your list now. That's why I made the um, video during my Facebook Live on Wednesday when we did the walkthrough, because history says um, things sell very, very quickly, okay? I know sometimes it's nice if we can wait till a payday or something like that designer series paper that's on sale, I would expect that would go very quickly. Um, some of those stamp sets with coordinating dies, I would think would go very quickly because many of the dies are discounted. So people can get a really, really good um, uh, price on the bundle. So yes, last time some of those stamps did sell even before the in color items. And remember, this catalog is smaller than our annual catalog. So that may be another reason um, that things sell very quickly because there just aren't as many um, products retiring for this mini catalog. So and when I do scrapbook layout, scrapbook pages, I tend to be um, pretty quick and easy because to me, the most important thing about scrapbooking is getting the photos on the pages and um, marking them. You know, the dates, who was there, what the occasion was, that kind of thing. So I don't want to spend, nor do I have, <laughs> an exorbitant amount of time to spend on scrapbooking. The other thing I do a lot is design my pages so that, especially if I'm pre-designing, sometimes I'm designing the pages before, I, the, before the event occurs. So I don't exactly know what I'm gonna be putting on there. So therefore, if I make easy designs, I can also use them in different ways. For example, I could use them this way. I could do it this way, this way. I could put them close together and have more of the blank space on the outsides. Or my super traditional way is just 
doing it like this. Let me raise, I'm trying to raise this higher so you can get more of the picture in. Let's see. Always a little bit different when you're working on a large project like scrapbook layouts. So I'll just start by You can make these strips go all the way to the outer edge of your cardstock, or you can leave a little bit of the cardstock exposed. And I think designer series paper packs like this one in particular, the Hey Sports Fan, um, is really cool too because with all these dies that we can use to cut things directly from the DSP, um, it just, how do I say, um, it adds, it's an easy way to embellish the pages without a lot of fuss, without a lot of time. So I'm going to cut some of these out. I'm going to start with cutting this banner. And what else do I want to die cut? How about, I'm going to do this one, best day ever. Actually, I'm going to do these two, best day ever and game two. So my friend Rosie and I have this idea. We've talked about this for years and we're planning to um, do at least one, hopefully maybe a couple this summer, but that is to, um, I need something with yellow. That is that we want to go around and visit different ballparks. We've all, we've both been baseball fans, um, but we want to go around and visit different ballparks and um, for Christmas I even found one that said um, a book oh what was it called the the uh, MLB what was it MLB stadium bucket list or something like that um, so that was kind of fun so that's where I kind of was thinking when I got this paper that I'd want to use of it, use some of it in that way. And that's why I was thinking I would like to make a couple of scrapbook layouts with this. Now you probably know the tip that if you're die cutting multiple things, and I probably could do them all if I had my big machine out, but I'm just going to stick with this one. But you can cut um, multiple things at, at once, and that does save a good amount of time for you. So I'm going to use that. Cut another one of those. I want to cut another ticket like this. I want to cut this yay banner. You could even cut plain banners from the cards um, from cardstock, and then put your own things on the banner. Could be a, a, a child's name or um, what else could you do? Like a little team logo or put a baseball on there. Or something like that. So I've got that. I've got this ticket. I want some more of those little yellow ticket die cuts. And the reason I'm cutting it on an angle is I don't want to have to think about having the stars perfectly lined up. I want it to be kind of random looking. 
because if I know if I can't make it perfectly straight, the way to go is random because you can't be wrong, okay? It's gonna work no matter what. And I think it's just a little more fun and whimsical when it's random rather than having, trying to cut that so all those stars would be in a straight line. So I've got this. What else can I add here? I'm gonna put this out of the way. I'm thinking I have to do something with this. And I don't quite know what yet, but I just think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna think of a way to use that. And I'm looking for more of that blue. Here it is. This is what I'm gonna do with this one. So this measures, and again, this is just a scrap. It's just, I just so happen to have that. So this is five and a quarter. So I'm actually gonna cut this to five inches. So this is five by two. And then with this blue, I'm going to cut a piece that measures five by seven. Well, this is five by five. So here's five by seven, because that can be for a, to mount a large photo on maybe the group at the baseball game, something like that. Actually gonna um, put that on a piece of navy as well, make that pop up a little bit. So that was, let's see, five by two. So I'm gonna cut this five and an eighth by two and an eighth. Just cause I want only a tiny bit of Knight of Navy cardstock border around it. For this, I'm going to put this on so that I have the same amount of the Poppy Parade red spacing on the three sides, left, right, and bottom. And then I'm gonna pop, oh, maybe I want it over here. Ooh, I think I, it's kind of busy. I think I want it here. And this I will pop up. I know some people don't like to use dimensionals on, their scrapbook layouts, but I do. <laughs> and I get it. I don't like to use thick embellishments on my layouts that could ruin the photos or the pages um, before and after. Do you guys know this tip? This helps with, especially with the small ones. You take your fingernail and just press it to the center and it lifts up the edge of that backing. Makes it easy, even easier to pull those off. So I'm gonna put this here. So I have a place for a good size photo, maybe even um, a title or a year or something, or a list of names of the people in the photo. Then on this one, I love the vintage look to this paper. That's very cool. And I also don't use very much adhesive. If you have a good, first of all, if you have a good adhesive, you don't need a lot of adhesive. Um, my other thought is 
if I would later decide I want to move something, I can pick it up fairly easily and do that. And third, if you're like me, um, oh, okay, St. Louis Cardinals. I have never been to the Cardinals Stadium, and that wouldn't be too far of a drive either from Ohio. Um, but you're, it, most people put their scrapbook pages in some kind of protector, right? And that protector is going to help push these down. So there's no reason to use overuse adhesive. These little tickets also have the perforated um, edges and things too. I think that's fun. Up there. And I feel like, let me see if I, I would like to, well, that says you're invited. Let's see what I have here. Oh, here, perfect. That's what I was looking for. And you see how easy this is? See how quickly it comes together? I literally asked you just 15 minutes ago who would like to see me make a quick and easy scrapbook layout. And I have a mess here, so let me find the correct die. There we go. Oops, wrong one. Our family used to go to ball games a lot. Honestly, I've not been to a ball game in a long time. No, I take that back. I take that back. Rosie, I took Rosie um, to a Cincinnati Reds game last year for her birthday in August. And we had a great time, of course. Now here in Columbus, we don't have a major league team, but we do have the Columbus Clippers, a minor league team. I believe for the Indians, I believe that's correct. There's also um, a minor league team in Dayton. Oh yeah, I like this. When you're adhering a group or several things, it's kind of nice if you can lay them out in a group first, because that way you can see how everything fits together, kind of see if things are balanced. But look, look how quickly that came together. I, can, I still have room to add more of those fun die cuts if I want to. Um, here's an easy way also, um, you know, most photos are standard size, right? Unless you get them printed differently. So a lot of times I will just, I'm looking, here's my paper trimmer. I don't know why I put it on right, my right because I always use it on, have it on the left. Anyways, so most photos are four by six, right? And oftentimes we cut them down a little bit. So what I like to do is just start with a 12 by 12 sheet, cut it in half. So now I have two pieces that measure six by 12. And then I'm gonna cut each of those strips down until I have six four by six pieces. And, and even if, um, say for example, you have the finished layouts, 
and you're like, well, Mary, I didn't, you know, that's not really the way I took my photos. I didn't do um, two four by six photos, or um, maybe I have a vertical one instead of a horizontal. You know what? You can lay a vertical picture here. It's just a different layout. Think outside the box, okay? We don't always have to um, layer everything the same way. Okay, I like that there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this. But, so I, I refer to these as pre-made um, scrapbook pages, pre-made. So after I go to a ball game or if I'm pulling out some old photos of my family at ball games, I can just fit the photos onto here. I wanna go up a little bit because I'm trying to even out the space here and here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't get out a ruler, I just kind of eyeball it. Here's another tip. If you feel like you've got that piece exactly where you want it, don't pick it up and then try to put it back in that exact same spot. Lift up one side and put a little adhesive lift up the other side and add a little more adhesive there and notice for this four by six piece i just put two little bits of adhesive behind it that's plenty so now i've already got a great start i have room to do a um, title if i want to i could have a little um piece of paper here or something where I do a little journaling, I could add more of the die cuts like I did to the left side. Let's play with this a little bit. And this is, this is basically what I do. I just kind of play. And I don't mind if things overlap. I think that adds to the interest. So that's what I'm looking at here, having these pieces overlap. For being able to put pre-made pages together this quickly, I really should be doing more scrapbooking. I think it's just, I need to designate the time. Anybody else feel that way? Actually, Jenny Graber's watching, and that is why, um, or that's how I met Jenny Graber. She and another person were hosting a craft weekend in Northern Kentucky for the aquarium. And I was a Stampin' Out! vendor then. And that was, gosh, many years ago, right, Jenny? I don't know when that was when I first met you. But she has moved on to a different job and um, she has been attending my Creative Escape weekends as a guest, so that's fun. We've kind of come full circle, right, Jenny? <laughs> Playing is fun, hence why paper therapy is so good. I love that, and isn't that the truth? It is fun, and it is um, good therapy. It gives us a break from real life let's allows us our brain to take a rest too because we can focus on one project one thing at a time i feel like i need something here let's see here oh how about this play ball let's do that let's do this play ball And then I just keep going. I get started and I just keep going. Okay. So let me just add this and then we will call it a day. I might add some of those other pieces later. Yep. 
you know, I'm, I forget about scrapbooking even. And when I do it, like now I'm having so much fun, I think, oh, gosh, I wish I had the rest of the day to design scrapbook pages. <laughs> but I do have some other work I have to get done, don't I? Oh, I can give you a sneak peek at the next class to go as well. Okay, and don't forget, if you would like to possibly win one of the two cards that was made in today's Facebook Live, you need to com um, type in the comments, uh, hey, sports fan. And if you do that, your name will be entered into the drawing. I could use a few other things or at least I don't like to go crazy and add too much because um, sometimes you do want to leave a little space where you can add names or dates or a title things like that okay but there's just a really quick and easy scrapbook layout two pages you could even you put this in a frame to instead of using them in a scrapbook maybe put this in a frame Maybe the grandparents with the grandchildren at the ball game. Maybe a child's um, softball game or t-ball game. And you post their photos and give it as a gift to grandparents or dad on Father's Day, that kind of thing. So that is it for today. Um, our two scrapbook pages. The off-center Z-fold card. And then we also made a simple patriotic card with the Hay Sports Fan um, Designer Series paper. Lori, I'm so glad you enjoy my classes. Um, my classes continue to grow. And uh, if you're somebody that has taken the classes, please spread the word. I love to get referrals. Um, and if you've never tried one of my classes to go, um, think about doing so. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. I'm going to announce this next class on Sunday. And it, and I, what did I do with the stamp set? It's a bundle. Sweetest Cherries is the bundle. Sweetest Cherries. So this is just one of the four designs that you'll make with the Sweetest Cherries class to go. And I will announce this class on Sunday. May 29th, okay? Oh, you love it, Jenny? Yes, and that bundle is a stamp set in a punch. Stamp set in a punch, I can show you that too. And I, when I ordered this, I thought the cherry was gonna be tiny. I actually love the size of it. So it's just, I'd say it's a little bit bigger than an inch, maybe inch and a quarter but I love the size of it. And the stamp set is so fun because there's all these different sentiments that you can mix and match. Um, that red is the new one. What's it called? Sweet Sorbet. That red, or I, I assume you're talking about the one for the cherry card, Lori. The red here is Sweet Sorbet. The red in the Hey, sports fan set is Poppy Parade, okay? But for the cherry um, class, it is Sweet Sorbet that I use. But just fine sentiments to mix and match like this. Thank you for being so sweet or sweet friend or um, wishing you a sweet day. Life is sweet with you in it. So just a lot of fun and a lot of possibilities. Yes, some of these would, yes, it's sort of that, um, where is, now I lost the question here. Yes, yeah, some of those words would look great with that bird. And I think because it's the bold and whimsical fonts um, with the bold bird, sweet songbirds. So yes, I do think, and that's a great thing, Lori. I love that you asked that because that tells me that 
you know that you can increase the versatility of your stamp sets by mixing and matching um, parts of one stamp set with another. Awesome. You just made my day. All right, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye so I can get back to work with what I'm working on here in the Stampin' Peace Studio. I wish you, if you're in the U.S., I wish you a very safe and happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all of our veterans who have served and to those who paid the ultimate price with their life. Um, I'm not sure Emily came home today. Um, I might be spending some time with the kids. Well, I am throughout the weekend. I don't know if we have a plan for Monday or not yet. So I'm not sure if I'll be going live on Monday, um, but definitely the other two days next week. So, but if I don't go live on Monday, maybe I'll do something for you on Tuesday instead. Happy Memorial Day. Have a great weekend. Um, take care and be safe. Bye-bye.